Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Game Hub. I'm your host, Gamer K, and it's a brand new month, the month of May. I finally got my hair cut. I'm feeling refreshed, and the Game Hub this month has a lot of great videos. And to start it off, it's time for another game review where, if I'm remembering correctly, is my final Telltale video until The Wolf Among Us 2. Hopefully, that will be in this year's future. Hopefully. But going back, we're taking a trip through the galaxy in Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. And this one is surprisingly pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I mean, is it as grand as the other Telltale games I've reviewed, which are all of these ones? Not talking about the Law & Order game, because that was on my iPad, and as fun as it was, it was okay, to say the least. But, in 2017, the Guardians of the Galaxy one was released, and me loving a lot of Telltale games, I decided to get it. And around that time, I was... Yeah, I mean, they did well with the Batman game, so why not? <coughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm getting old, I've been getting over a week-long cold I had last week, so bear with me. Let's see here. So, the Guardians game, great world-building, and definitely in uses utilizes a lot of the Guardian lore that is... Okay, I'm going to be honest. Again, like I keep saying in any video where it kind of comes up, my knowledge on Marvel is Spider-Man mostly and Marvel movie somewhat. And also X-Men, a little bit of the cartoons. But again, comic books never really were my thing growing up, so... When the Guardians of the Galaxy movie came out, I was confused. But they did a great way of explaining the characters, explaining their backstories a little bit. And then this came out, so I pretty much had a good uh, basis on, enjoy on my overall enjoyment. It's not like The Wolf Among Us, where it was kind of a new thing that you can be introduced into the lore. This game definitely gets everything right. And that is hard to do. I mean, the people who did the, the technically, how would I call this? A Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy game. That one was done a good number of years ago after this. And that was still good. Pretty, actually pretty good. Not going to lie. But this one is what started my love of the Guardians, aside from the movies. And it got me into enjoying Telltale games a lot more. And the story that they go for is pretty good. It, it, it makes use of the Guardians in a realistic way. And it's all about kind of remembering those who you've lost in your life. And how certain actions have affected your story. And that's what Telltale, again, I've said this so many times, Telltale knows how to build drama. It's not drama that can just immediately happen and we're forced into a situation. And the choices that are available in this, in this, in this game definitely feel appropriate. The game starts with Star-Lord on the, what's the ship name? Yes, I'm getting a little bit of information this time. I did my, re I just recently replayed this game just for this review. Forgive me if I don't remember the name of the ship immediately. Thank you. I swear to God, I'm going to disconnect you one of these days. Guardians of the Galaxy ship. The Milano? 
The Milano. Okay, see, I got it before it even showed up. Shut up. Flying in the Milano and the Nova Corps requests us because Thanos is out. Out on an abandoned Cree planet looking for an ancient artifact. Because of course he is. Because Thanos is literally a guy when it comes to when it comes to guys with with ancient artifacts cuz either he wants to wear them or use them to destroy the universe that's usually what happens and again the graphics are kind of comic book style like they did for the batman series except without the bits of lines that kind of indicate like the comic s style which i do love and the character designs Yeah, they actually look really, really good. The designs of each character, even if you're not a Guardian, a Guardians of the Galaxy fan, or you don't know anything about them, th these designs definitely hit on what the characters are. So it's pretty easy to figure out who's who. Plus, again, as always in a Telltale series, in one way or another, there is a codex that kind of gives you people's backstories and backgrounds and a little bit of information as you progress through each episode. <coughs> and I do love that this whole series uh, partakes with the Kree, which were an uh, a civilization, uh, species of alien that were basically eradicated in one way or another. So utilizing the lore of this game of this game that was very little outside of comic books, very well done. And yes, it's called Guardians of the Galaxy, but like in the other game in the 2021 game, we only control Peter Quill. Which you can honestly definitely guess that was going to happen. But at the same time, throughout the game, throughout uh, certain action sequences, you will control the Guardians in one way or another by utilizing, obviously, the quick time event system that Telltale is pretty famous for with their action sequences and their choice decisions. And the decisions actually freaking matter in this game. And I'll get to that in a second. And there, other than the Guardians, there are other characters that show up, like Yondu Udanta shows up a little bit in flashbacks, uh, once in episode two, so he doesn't really show up afterwards. Uh, Mantis is back, and I this design of Mantis, I love it. I mean, I love the look. I love the outfit, and I like how they made her less insect-like, more kind of like they did in the 2021 game, or that they did not do in the movie. But again, anyone who knows Mantis and loves her are, is, are literally going to just love her. this version of her. She's She appears in episode 3 and has an intricate role within the story. So going back to the whole Thanos thing... Uh, uh, he finds this mystical item in a four in the a temple <laughs> called the Eternity Forge. And we take him out within the beginning of the game. That's right. Thanos, the Mad Titan, the guy. It took two movies. Two movies. Guardians of the Galaxy. the Avengers movie and the two uh, in f and the two other Avenger movies to defeat we get done in literally the first half the first 10% of the of the whole game I mean, yeah it's a different take on the story so obviously he doesn't have the infinity gauntlet and it's pretty fun actually it's really good and then afterwards we have a big dilemma of what to do with the body to sell it 
And once again, choices differ in the game and will craft your story and will break and and uh, forge friendships and relationships throughout the game. Some some choices will have Rocket pissed, at, pissed off and will have Gamora being more on your side. Or some will have Drax really irritated that he didn't get to help, while all some other ones will have Gamora pissed at you, while Rocket is thrilled that you took his side. Groot doesn't get that much pissed off in any of these scenarios, which is in tune with Groot's character. <coughs> What else? So afterwards, we are given the villain of the game, Hala the Accuser, who is looking for the Eternity Forge to resurrect her her crease, her dead son, and the the many many dead Kree soldiers that she has on her ship. For the Eternity Forge is a mystical item where a life for a life. By killing someone, it will resurrect someone, and it plays with the memories of the Guardians, where Peter is having visions of his mother. Not ego used by in this series, which I love. Sorry, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell? Who played Egon? Not Egon. Who played Ego in Guardians of the Galaxy 2? Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 features Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, and others. Thank you, that was very helpful. Why do I even bother half the time? Why? So yeah, during Flash, each, care, each of the Guardians will have their own flashback episode indicating a loved one that they met that they lost and note to self episode two will make you cry like a cry like a teen girl watching sisterhood of the traveling pants for the first time or watching the notebook for the first time i kid you not <coughs> and considering this game t was before guardians three came out That scene that everyone knows and cries at? I cried at this first. So if you cried at episode at the end at Guardians 3, you're gonna cry at episode 2. And you're gonna cry hard. Especially if you bring her outside. You are going to cry like a little bitch. And I'm not over-exaggerating that. And I just scratched myself because of this. God damn you, Telltale, for do for predicting the, the most heart-wrenching thing ever. And Mar and Marvel Studios did it years later. Thank you for giving us a double dose of this. Thank you. Good night. Oh my God. So yeah, the whole thing of the Eternity Forge is it will bring back someone if it's got a charge in, which it did at the end of episode one because Thanos died holding it. Peter gets killed by Hala. <coughs> so the Forge he brought him back to life. And despite some people's attempts, the Forge cannot bring someone back who doesn't have a physical body. Unless we go to the temple in episode 3, power charge it so it can bring back anyone. Or we can destroy it and make every the, the final villains of the whole thing look like undead purple zombies or whatever. So there are... So real early in this year, in the in this in this game, episode three, we get an important choice that really affects the whole tone of the final two episodes, which I like. 
And obviously, throughout this game, the Guardians will be mad at each other, annoying each other, because that's what they do. And we'll have to bond over them and return, bring them back later on in the game. Now, obviously, being in Telltale fashion, this is a five-episode game, about two hours apiece, so this whole game will take you about ten hours to do. <coughs> Which, it's still great. Uh, what else in this game? I mean, it's basically the, the Telltale formula. Uh, choice decision. Every episode has big choices, small choices, that either affect the overall thing of the game and your story. I'm just going to give you a couple things, guys. When Drax asks you to launch him out of the, the pod, do it. It gives you the better ending for episode four. Uh, either let Nebula come with you or not. That's up to you. Uh, choose to enhance the Forger's power. Because at the end of episode five, you will be able to get a choice to revive some one of the four choices. Or you can choose not to bring anyone back. But me, considering three characters had time with their loved one, going the the obvious route is uh, the obvious choice is the best one and it, and basically now a days it's basically a big middle finger to the to the third guardians of the galaxy movie for what the hell they did oh what else what else in this game oh the voice acting don't know a whole lot of the voice actors. Some of them have been used a lot in uh, Telltale numerous times. Some have not. Uh, the uh, voice... Uh, I don't really know the voice actors for Gamora or or uh, Star or a Peter at all. Uh, the one for Drax most likely voiced Drax in another video game, which is awesome. Okay, but first I'm going to say this. Ashley Birch, who voices Chloe Price from... Life is Strange voices Nebula. No matter what this girl, this girl's in, it's always the color blue. I don't understand why, but she did a great job. Also, <laughs> Telltale, at the time of this game's development, whose idea was it to have Nolan North Voice Rocket! Whose idea was that? Because whoever it is, bring them back onto the development team. Bring them back. It was genius. I swear to God. Everything Rocket says is hilarious. Except when he does the sad moments. And it, the sad moments are great with Rocket. Cause, and again, it's... It really hurts. Like, it really gets you here. And it's so painful. And the emotion of this whole seat, of this whole epic game, is what drives each character. The loss of someone. And some of them can learn, to, and with Peter's help, some of them can learn to move on from their trauma or keep it. But I always choose to have them keep it with them because that is something to strive for. As certain characters go through a turmoil or a loss of cri a crisis and it works. Every scenario works and you feel relatable to them in one way or another. And the flashback sections are some of the best in done for the game. They're not very cliche but they do offer a lot into characters backstories and i do love that also in true guardians fashion if me if me praising the soundtrack from the other game that came out wasn't enough the soundtrack here is just as great with the titles, with the main song being, oh, oh my God, what, what what is it? 
living thing by the Electric Light Orchestra. It plays a majority of the time in each episode. Dancing in the Moonlight. I mean, every episode starts with a great song. And that's awesome. And then some of the songs return in the later game. Like, at the end of episode four, we got Stone Cold Crazy by Queen. <coughs> yes. I mean, I know it sounds freaking ridiculous, but it works. And then at the near the end, of, near the final fight of episode five, we get Crazy on You, which freaking works every every song that they picked for this game works in any in the scenario that it's done this is what the guardians of the galaxy does great adding old songs and they fit the moment i mean it's not like a jukebox musical when any song can be added into any scenario these songs amp up the intensity either with the emotion the ridiculousness i mean Dancing in the Moonlight playing at the beginning of episode two. It's funny. It's ridiculous. But at the same time, it still has those bits of humor. And that's what the Guardians are great at. Humor, drama, and overall just out of this world galactic world building i mean we go to a lot of planets in this game and it's not like a it's not like a whole pick and choose thing they are usually preset but you will end up going to either both places wherever you go i mean it's not like if you do this path you'll go to this area or if you go to this path you'll go to that area and you'll have to replay it so replayability not so much for this game like once you play it You'll want to wait like a couple years or a couple months to replay it, which isn't that bad. It's a telltale game. So once you get your fun out of it, you'll come back to it later on. And I do love how in <clears throat> every single episode has its own thing with each character, like I said, and it does it in spades. Where this game kind of falls short on the other Telltale games that I love is when you when you when you replay it a couple times, you start to wonder that if not for certain choices and <coughs> dialogue options, it is surprisingly short and there's not as much uh action moments as you would want which does kind of bring it down just a segment and obviously you can't while you're on the milano you can't really choose songs i mean it's a telltale game so we're not gonna let you choose the songs at, because you don't spend that much time on the milano out side of the set moments but the story here is great it is one of the best do i wish other characters had a little bit more screen time like maybe give groot a little bit longer sections also the thing that they do where you pick for the final mission you pick and choose people's jobs You know what? I'm not going to spoil it. It's just hilarious that these crucial jobs that you choose, I can't spoil it. If you want to enjoy what I'm talking about, play the whole freaking game. It's great. It's a great time. And the Guardians, I mean, if this was any other game, I would definitely give this game a lower rating because... But because it's the Guardians of the Galaxy, it just bumps it up with their humor, the charm, the action, the scenery, the world building. And also, again, the soundtrack and the emotional moments definitely make this Telltale. If you're a big Telltale fan and you 
basically have every single game. This is one that must be in your library. Like, if you got this, but you didn't get Guardians, a lot more fun, my friend. So, Gamer K's final verdict for Guardians of the Galaxy, the Telltale series. I wanted to give it a bit of an over high score because I like the Guardians so much. And I need to rewatch Guardians 3 when I get a chance because it's been a while. But despite it being a fun game and one that actually has a great story and beefed and <coughs> overall theme to it. And ho and that that freaking teaser that they did at the end, guys. Nothing's done with it. Which makes me sad. Because of that and the fact of what happened, what's going on with Telltale now, I gotta give Guardians of the Galaxy a very solid 7 out of 10. If, I mean, I hope that the Guardians is another list that is hopefully going to return to the Telltale archives and be given another adventure. And because now we have Mantis, and if you chose certain choices, you get a couple more people on your ship. Also, I'm, I really, like, another reason I gave it a 7 was they didn't go super overboard with the whole relationship with Gamora and Peter. I'm glad they didn't go super overboard with it. Because they do give them some nice moments if you choose to. But at the same time, it's not a romance game. And I can definitely see how people would have loved that. But at, for me, I enjoy where they did it and how they chose to <coughs> take it. So, Telltale, another great one added done on my review list now i'm waiting for you guys wolf among us 2 maybe a batman season 3 so and maybe guardians of the galaxy 2 cuz because of that new one that you guys did i'm looking forward to the new graphics i'm looking at the new engine that you guys do new choices new routes so those are my 3 that i'm looking forward to Hopefully, two of them are maybe, one of them is, is, I'm getting hyped. So, hopefully, hopefully we get it pretty soon. And that's it for this week, video, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe down below, and join me next week, where E is returning for the Game Hub, as we hopefully don't get pissed off with people's rankings of anime openings. And I swear to God, if I see one person give the peak anything lower than an eight, I'm going to lose my shit. Just a warning. This is Gamer K, logging out.